According to the latest news, the Panasonic S1H Mark II isn't going to have 8K video. But is this a direct quote from Panasonic? Stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. In China, on August the 10th, 2023, at the Photo and Imaging 2023 event, Panasonic hosted a question and answer session, and one of the executives on the panel was Kentaro Tamaki, Panasonic's Imaging Division's Global Marketing Director. When asked about the popularity of 8K video in cameras such as the Canon EOS R5, which came out in 2020, the Nikon Z9 and Z8, as well as the Fujifilm X-H2, and of course the Sony A7R5, Panasonic said that it could not disclose when it would provide 8K video. Clear as mud, right? Well, the audience didn't let Panasonic off the hook. Panasonic said that in the current consumption field, such as televisions, it hasn't really reached the stage of 8K popularization. So for technology development, 8K video isn't a priority. 6K and 6K oversampled 4K multi-proportion video specifications that support multiple social media are more important. I think what Panasonic's saying here is that consumers just aren't ready for 8K, not in terms of televisions. I don't think there's enough demand now, let alone in several decades from now. So does this mean that Panasonic has no intention of delivering 8K video in upcoming refreshes of the S1H or the S1? Well, for context, let's go back in time. In 2018, Panasonic announced the development of an 8K sensor and said that a camera would be coming out and start shipping in October of 2019. But then in September 2019, one month before the supposed announcement, Panasonic said, hold on a minute here, we're not ready, but it will be ready in time for the Tokyo Olympics in 2020. But then as we got close to the Olympics, Panasonic later stated that it won't happen until 2022. So here we are in September of 2023. The only Panasonic announcement we had was at the beginning of the year, announcing the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X. No rumors, no hints of anything coming in September or October, although there was some noise earlier in the year saying that the S1H Mark II was supposed to be coming out in October. But the real question here, the real question we have to ask ourselves is, is Panasonic missing the point? Well, yes and no. You see, no in terms of consumer devices. We don't need 8K televisions. There's, very, there's a very small segment that needs high-resolution, high-end televisions delivering 8K or more. For the average homeowner, for that huge segment where you need economies of scale, there's just absolutely no need for an 8K television. But for filmmakers, videographers, it's a slightly different story. The video that you're watching right now was shot on the Canon EOS R5, a camera that I've had for over three years. It's recorded using full sensor readout 8K over sample 4K at 120 frames per second. In fact, that full sensor readout 8K over sample 4K is so detailed that I can do things like this. You're watching this video at 130% magnification, 130% of this. And that's just absolutely incredible. Let's go back to 130%. This gives you incredible detail. And maybe you're watching this on your phone, but even if you're watching it on a television, it still gives pretty good detail despite YouTube's compression. So for video production, having that detail in 8K over sample 4K, or to actually shoot in 8K. So for example, if I'm doing the Niagara, let's cue Niagara Falls again. If I'm shooting the falls, if I'm shooting landscapes, then having 8K really helps me later on because I can crop in as I'm doing with this video here, again, at 130%, or maybe I can go to 115% because I've got enough detail. It doesn't appear soft when you're watching this video. And that's what's really critical. Now, a lot of people will say, yeah, but Simon, it, it, it's overkill. You don't need that much. But that's not really true, is it? Because you see, as photographers, we've been cropping for years because it allows us to take a shot. And then later on, all that extra information allows us to crop in to get a tighter, better shot. You see, it's no longer 2018, 2019, or even 2020. But again, let's readdress the context here. Back in 2018, Panasonic had stated that they've been working on an 8K sensor, and they've been doing so for many years, probably at about the same time Canon was working on their 8K sensor, that 45 megapixel sensor for the Canon EOS R5. But since then, Canon has announced the Canon EOS R5 back in 
2020, July of 2020, and then Nikon released the Nikon Z9, capable of producing 8K up to 60 frames per second, followed this year by the Nikon Z8, again, 8K at 60 frames per second, the Fujifilm X-H2, 8K as well, and of course the Sony A7R5, although it only does 24 and 25 frames per second, that's more than five cameras that can do 8K. So maybe Panasonic will feel the pressure, but they did go further and state that in terms of development terms, the priority for 8K is not high. 6K, 6K oversampled 4K, multi-ratio video specifications, and support for multiple social media are far more important. I do want to set a bit of a reality check here in that all of this is machine translated, and that does, well, it, it creates a bit of a problem because the subtleties of certain words are lost, but if we, all we have to do is go back in time to get the quotes from Yamani-san or others at Panasonic talking about autofocus, and when they were asked about when a phase detect autofocus system or LiDAR would come to Panasonic cameras, and each time they were very vague about when it might happen, saying that they had prioritized other things. And when the GH6 came out, it didn't have face detect autofocus. They actually took a lot of time to address why autofocus wasn't prioritized for their cameras and that all these other things they thought were far more important. And autofocus, well, it didn't have the priority. And then, of course, this year in January, Panasonic announced the S5 Mark II and the S5 Mark II X with a face detect autofocus system, a much improved autofocus system over that depth from defocus contrast detect autofocus system. So while Panasonic's comments at this trade show from this panel are anything but, well, clear and concise, the one thing that kind of bothers me is when they bring up that word priority because Panasonic has used that word before to indicate what's important to them. And by saying that 8K video isn't a priority and then further stating that 6K and that 6K oversample video is more of a priority, and that social media aspects are more important, that has me a little bit worried. But again, it's anything but clear and concise and, or even coherent. And what I would be willing to bet here is that for anything under, let's say, $3,000 or $3,500, no, we're not going to see 8K video. But I still want to hold out to the possibility that the S1H Mark II would have 8K video. Maybe it just won't have a priority for other cameras, but I certainly hope it does have a priority in the s 1H Mark II. What do you think? Do you own a Panasonic camera? Are you waiting for a refresh of the S1H and the S1? And what would you do if, that, if Panasonic decided not to announce either of those two cameras with 8K video, if they just stayed with 6K over sample 4K, which would mean probably a sensor resolution of around 24 megapixels. If they went up to 30, 32, that would be 7K over sample 4K. Tell me what you think in the comment section below, and if you were, and if you decided to migrate away from Panasonic over this, who would you go to? Fujifilm with the X-H2, Nikon with the Z8 or the Z9, the Canon EOS R5, which is now going on to three years, the Sony A7R5. Let me know in the comment section down below. And if you want to stay up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, specifically what's going on with Panasonic, the S1H Mark II, the S1, then go ahead and subscribe and make sure you also choose all notifications. And for all those minor news stories, all those stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well then go ahead and follow me on Twitter, formerly, no, go ahead and follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter. Um, I'm always tweeting out stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video or pricing information and discounts. But that's it for now. Have yourself a great week and we'll see you again soon.